Okay, this is the initial introduction review on the Sentec, also known as Harbor Freight, 3000 watt, 6000 watt peak uh, power inverter. Uh, I've been dealing with some stuff in my, home, my mobile workshop trailer, which normally has been using a 2000 watt inverter that was around a 2011 model of uh, uh, the Harbor Freight stuff. I, I think at that point it was called Chicago Electric, not Sentec. Uh, so it uses a slightly older design than the newer models, and one of the big criticisms on that particular one was that the cooling fan runs continuously whenever the, uh, the inverter is turned on, therefore that particular 2000 watt inverter will uh, burn batteries down just on its own because it's running its cooling fan all the time. Um, also, the, one of the problems I had with that one, and you'll see in one of my older videos, where there was a um, some testing I did with power saws, table saws. The other one would not run the worm drive skill saw, which is a full 15 amp motor, and has a pretty high starting draw on it. Uh, the other thing, of course, was the 2000 watt inverter had no hope of running a portable welder. It could run most normal benchtop power tools, of course, except for, let's say, the worm drive saw, uh, although it would run a table saw and it would run a 10 inch chop saw uh, r relatively well. Uh, the other thing is I've had my doubts about whether or not it would run a 12 inch chop saw which I plan on purchasing at some point this year. So I decided to go ahead and get the 3000 watt uh, power inverter and I'm going to be building this into a solar, uh, a higher powered solar generator cart where it's basically this large inverter plus a uh, high capacity uh, battery, a single large high capacity battery, and preferably deep cycle, but again if you've seen some of my other videos you'll notice that when I'm using power tools I almost favor batteries that have uh, the capability of offering starting amperage. Uh, there's reasons for that I'll discuss later. And so it's basically a you know a small cart with a, a large capacity battery in this 3000 watt inverter uh, that will allow me to run off grid a lot of power tools which normally are either never going to be cordless or are extremely cost prohibitive in a cordless version or simply too powerful to have an onboard battery. So this is part of a newer series of Harbor Freight inverters. And a lot of people might ask, why not the 5,000 watt inverter? The 5,000 watt inverter, after all, can, can be uh, uh, wired into other electrical systems and run multiple devices at once. That's the big difference between the 3,000 watt and the 5,000 watt, apart from $100 in price difference. One of the things I ran into is that the local Harbor Freight store does not have the updated model on the 5000 watt charge controller it is very large very heavy and would detract from the portability of the system that I want to create uh, this one uh, you can see in relation to my hand is uh, you know about the size of some 1200 watt inverters except that it's tall you can see how tall this is it's particularly tall and, um, and it has four outlets on the front whereas a lot of inverters, you know, your, your middling size inverters, they're only going to have three. Another feature I really like about this one is that we've got a USB output, although I have my experience with the other USB outlets on the uh, some of the other Harbor Freight stuff has been that the power flow in them is not quite consistent enough uh, within a very narrow voltage range that Apple devices tend to want to accept. So it will charge a lot of USB battery banks, which you can use to even out the power flow, such as the, uh, the one from Banggood, which uh, I uh, have shown in other videos. We have a very basic on and off switch, on off. We have a power level. Now what this does, it works a little bit differently from the level meters you're going to see on other devices. Uh, some of them, such as the, uh, the sine wave inverter that I have in a camp trailer, will have a digital readout that shows how many watts is actually being used by the uh, sum total of devices on the uh, machine. This one, with the power level, and because it has multiple outlets, 
there's a possibility that you're going to be running multiple devices at once or multiple tools at once and this thing has a little bar graph that goes up to like red and orange uh, to say that hey listen you're you're getting out close to the maximum capacity of this uh, inverter the other thing that will happen when it starts to get warm is the rather large cooling fan will kick in and it's, uh, it's got a large cooling fan which thankfully doesn't run constantly. You see how large this is. It's it's kind of like a, a, a large cooling fan you might find on a gaming computer. Definitely larger than any of the others in the market. Because remember, this is basically twice as tall as, say, the 1200 watt inverter. And therefore, this, this cooling fan is twice the size. You also have some pretty big hefty lugs on here. It comes with some through bolts. These were part of a design request on a part of people who wanted to be able to use jumper cables to get power to the inverter and I, I'm not a big fan of this. The other ones had a big spin knob uh, in the older models but this gives you two large lugs which if you're going to use something like this on a temporary basis let's say at a job site you could power it with jumper cables but one of the problems you're going to run into is the jumper cables if you buy cheap ones don't push enough power to really get this thing running at full capacity. And there's other inverters which will actually have two sets of leads, uh, such as the 5000 watt inverter, uh, so that you can actually get enough power to this to push the amount of power that you're going to need to get it to run as, uh, uh, at full capacity. Now your 3000 watts continuous power is uh, equal to around 25 amps and remember a single wall outlet in a normal house is a 15 amp outlet so you could run more than one 15 amp outlet on this now when I went to test this with some fairly high power devices such as a portable welder and a worm drive circular saw uh, both those devices were pretty close to maxing this out I'm going to do some further testing in another video with the uh, portable welder because on my 90 amp Harbor Freight welder they say those things only have about a, a 12 amp draw I was only getting a consistent performance by using it on the low power setting uh, I, I'm going to but that was also with a small battery and when I hooked this up in a solar cart with a larger battery I think I were going to get a little bit better performance but I also noticed that that welder, even on the, uh, the, on the high power setting, was making a 5,000 watt inverter kind of choke. So whenever I was using that thing off grid with an inverter, I was only using it on a lower power setting. I also realized that by welding, we're creating a short in an electric system. That's, that's what the welding arc is. is it's effectively a short. And it may reduce the life of these components. So if you're going to use them with that kind of equipment regularly, I suggest buying it from a store and keeping a receipt and possibly purchasing the extended warranty. Uh, as far as a worm drive circular saw, I fully expect it to work, although my first test, it choked a little. On the second test, it seemed to work consistently after that. I think a lot of it has to do with making sure that you have a battery with sufficient capacity to run this, regardless of the size of your solar bank. The other thing is this thing's capable of sucking power down even faster than a vehicle alternator is going to charge it. So you need to understand that you know you're going to have to have battery capacity in addition to the vehicle running if you're going to be using a vehicle battery to uh, run a full power device off of this.